Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video we're going to review my new mid-range budget gaming computer that I put together for around $450. It consists of some of the older hardware but it, I feel it's still quite relevant in today's uh, games. This is a perfect build to play the newer titles at 1080p resolution and even the capability of 4K resolution at low to medium settings. Now something like this would usually cost four to six hundred dollars to build at a used market. It really depends if you're patient enough to hold off for that right part. Uh, we are using uh, an older generation i7 and an older generation GTX graphics card but uh, we're gonna go over all the parts in just a second here so let's take a look inside and see what we have okay so this is pretty much what it looks like inside let's start off with the case the case I'm sure looks familiar to you it's a NZXT H500 mid tower white edition a beautiful case very easy to work on a lot of space very easy cable management and for as far as aesthetics, I used this kit of the three Thermaltake 120 millimeter RGB fans that came with an RGB controller, which is placed underneath the graphics card. I don't know if you could see it right there, uh, which is really I like these fans a lot. The ring style, I always I was always sucker for these fans. And then I threw in um, an LED strip up on top to give it a little lighting above and next we're gonna go over the power supply which is a Corsair 650 watt power supply it's a semi modular 80 plus bronze uh, plenty of power for the system shouldn't have any issues to run this bad boy and the platform I used was an i7 6700 non K processor along with the MSI Z170 A uh, SLI plus motherboard and also came with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM which is made by Crucial Ballistics Ballistic and uh, that that pretty much came all together in one shot the platform you know the motherboard the processor and the RAM sticks so I was able to get it for 200 bucks really saved a lot there next I have the Asus Strix GTX 1060 uh, 6 gigabyte graphics card which is uh, this is really a beautiful card it's really humongous plenty of cooling it's got a back plate and it's RGB compatible as you can see and for storage I'm only currently using uh, Intel P600 M.2 NVMe 250 gigabyte SSD drive which is plenty for what I'm trying to do here in the future I might add an extra terabyte or two down below but for now uh, it's perfect for the setup and it runs really fast and then the, the last thing here is I want to talk to you about this uh, water cooler that I had laying around for years <laughs> uh, I originally was uh, installing the Corsair H600 I mean H H60 water cooler, uh, but I had some issues with it, and it looks like probably the the pump died on it, and I spent a lot of time diagnosing that. I tell you, that's one thing with when it comes to used parts is a pain in the neck, especially when it comes to a water cooler. Every time you gotta change the thermal base, you you do this, you do that, your idle temperatures are no good. Then you fire up the game, and then the thing goes skyrockets the temperatures through the roof like 80 Celsius, and you're like, wow. You don't know what's going on and you really spend a lot of time so I was really frustrated with that and then I'd, at a point where I was like what am I gonna do I don't have any other water cooling uh, system and then I remember about this thing I had laying around this is an older Alienware 120 meter millimeter water cooling kit that came from an older Alienware years ago that I had that I kept and I never had any issues to begin with when I first took it apart and fortunately this thing works like a champ no issues at all idle temperatures were high 20s low 30s and uh, yeah 
that's pretty much it on this build here and like I said it cost me around four hundred fifty dollars to in total uh, which is a really good bargain uh, and again if you're patient enough and you wait around you could get a really good build at this price you know to me a two three year old system is like still brand new I know this is an older generation graphics card and and, uh, and the platform too but it performs really well and it will play all the modern games right now at 1080p high to ultra settings at around 60 FPS and I was able to do some 4k gaming at a low to medium settings on older higher end titles also so there's really nothing wrong with this thing so without further ado let's test this bad boy out and see how well it does in some of the newer titles that I chose for this video stay tuned and here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider once again the platform is i7-6700 and GTX 1060 6 gigabytes of VRAM and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM looking at that cave. This is it. Jonah, I'm entering a cave. We may lose contact. This cave looks like it's usually underwater.
Okay, well that concludes our 1080p testing. As, as you could see, it goes on the highest presets, no problem, no issues. Now let's give it a shot at 4K resolution. First we're gonna lower this down to, let's say, medium preset. Turn that off. And go ahead, crank it up. Let's see if it's even playable. Hmm. Looks good. Lower something. Get it closer to 30. Let's see what we could do here. Hmm, not much. Yes, yeah, so a medium is playable. Yeah, but the frame rate's a little bit low. Let's try in low settings. Still should look good. Okay, let's see. Turn that off. Turn this off. Okay. So yeah, you could play 4K on this, you know, on a lower lower setting. And it still looks good. Definitely going to look better than 1080p, so there's really nothing wrong with the Oh yeah, as you could see the detail this is pretty incredible here. Oh yes, the drama, the drama. Come on. Get through that crack. Very claustrophobic scene here. Come on, you could do it. Reminds me of that movie, Descent. Come on. Oh, that was me. Alright, I messed up, guys. I'm very embarrassing. I thought it was still playing out. That's the cutscene. I, I had to keep going forward. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on, come on. Oh boy. Well, there you have it. That concludes our test on 4K. Uh, on lower settings. It's still playable and it looks good. All right, thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Okay, in the next game we're gonna be testing is Battlefield 5. Once again, the platform is i7-6700 non-K processor, which means uh, on the boost, max is 3.9 gigs uh, you'll see that sometimes 
um, you know, going up to that, but most of the time it's 3.7, along with the Asus Strix GTX 1060, six gigabytes graphics card, and 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 24 megahertz RAM. So we are starting on the lowest 1080p settings. And that's, you know, pretty much where you want to be at if you want to hit the 100 FPS average. As I'm sure you are aware, every time they make a new game, they make it harder and harder to run. So you, that's kind of forced. That's why you kind of forced to keep upgrading your hardware. But for a three-year-old system, this uh, performs still quite well. Very enjoyable. Oh, very sneaky. Man, this guy got me good. Already?
Amerikaner ausschalten. Wie stark sind Ihre Verbände? Keine Rolle. Sie sind uns nicht gewachsen. Now we're just going to max everything out. Now let's give it a shot at 4K. I don't think we could do it on Ultra, let's see. Probably have to tune it down. Eh. Well, you could see the difference right away. Wow, it's incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's a little sluggish, so, but you know, as you could see, it was doable. Let's just go to um, high settings here. Turn this down a notch. See what happens. If we could get in a, a decent gameplay without any stuttering. Mm -hmm. Not much of a difference, but... Let's see, let's, let's give it a medium. I think medium will be the perfect for this. And uh, don't forget everybody that medium on 4K is, is still just, on, especially on a 4K monitor, is still gonna look better than any platform system. So don't, don't get discouraged because, oh, you could only do medium, it's playable, it's 30, 40 FPS. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I see the difference. Yeah, so there you go. Medium probably would be your best bet. There's no stuttering. I mean, you're not going to get higher frame rates. Really, all you need is, you know, something above 30, something solid like, like I have here. But there's no lag or stuttering. And you could have a good, good experience. Oh boy. Well, they're just coming out everywhere. I wasn't ready. I was not ready for this. Wow. What was I doing? I wasn't even ready for this. Take it easy here. I got well, there you have it 1080p on all the settings, and we we're able to do 4K also. 
So as you can see, an old system like this is still quite relevant in today's modern games. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Bye bye. Okay, and this the next game we're testing here is Resident Evil 2. 1080p low settings. Plenty of frame rates here, I'll, I'll say. Everything on low. You could see the the GTX 1060 really kicks some butt in this game. You want those high frame rates? Just keep it on low. Let's say this is like the medium setting, I don't know. Kind of just a starting point. I do want to try this on the 4K resolution.
mentioned the first day. Okay, let's see what this bad boy could do. Let's max this max this thing out. As you can see, we're way above our threshold. Look at that. Just about six gigs, we're at eight. I think that should be good enough for this game to be playable. I'm actually gonna take away motion blur, I forgot about that. Totally unnecessary, and it does slow you down. Take that off, there you go. So yeah, that's pretty much what I wanted to see. If we max this out, if it's still playable, and it is on 1080p. We're maxed out. Okay, now let's give a shot at 4K. That'll be our last setting here. Now, we, yeah, we're gonna have to lower this down. Let's stay one gig here. Okay. Oh no, that. I didn't grab one, what happened there? There you go. Mm. Looks like I'm gonna have to lower the settings a little bit more. It looks good, but very sluggish. Almost as if playing on a console. Mm, but it looks good. Let's get a knife here. Wow, what a great detail. What 
So we're gonna turn this down just a notch to finish off this test here. Okay, well that concludes it. As you could see, you are capable of playing this game on 4K and around medium settings, no problem. You could even lower the settings to get more frame rates, but it looks good and it's definitely worth it. Alright guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.